Welcome to our channel and welcome to the live stream version of today's worship service. The live chat function is available and we encourage everyone to say hello to each other in the live chat, especially if you're visiting for the first time or you're new to the channel. Bulletins for you to follow along can be found on the uh, landing page of our website. It's located down near the bottom of the page. You see weekly services and you can click on the bulletin for the upcoming service. We will be going live shortly. Due to potential copyright concerns, we will often mute the audio during the organ prelude. So please do not attempt to adjust your volume at this time. And thank you for joining us for the online version of our worship today. And we hope to see you in person at a future service. Thank you and have a blessed day.
Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. And a happy Easter to everyone watching online. Any first-time visitors here today for Easter? Any first-time visitors? Oh, welcome, welcome. Please join us after. We have some refreshments in the parish hall just across the courtyard. And also, I heard there's some cheesecake left from Wednesday, <laughs> which means first come, first serve. Okay? All right. Well, just very, very quickly, uh, for those who are here for the first time or haven't been here for a while, we're still kind of keeping a little bit to um, some of the COVID uh, protocols. You will be coming up for communion. You will still receive your, uh, your wafer. But uh, right now, we're just doing little tiny chalices where you just do a little intinction or dipping into the cup. So there's no drinking out of any cup. It's just a little dip if you choose to have wine. Um, also, don't forget the boutique is open today in the parish hall when you have your cheesecake coffee and everything else. So if you have any last second gifts you need to buy, today's a perfect day to do it. Um, and again, thank you to everyone who provided for the 100 Easter baskets and put them together. And um, today they're being delivered or they're going to be at and given out at Crossroads Mission in Nogales for the children. And also, just one special thing, the rest of you read, your, read the bulletin yourself later. Um, April 10th, Wednesday, April 10th, our own Chris Arundel at 10 a.m. in the Parish Hall is going to be giving a special presentation on this, the 79th year of his liberation from a prisoner, uh, prisoner of war camp in the Philippines, where he and his family were liberated after three and a half years under the uh, Japanese uh, occupation. So he's going to be giving a special presentation, and you're all welcome to come to that. Information is in your bulletin. But let's get going. Let's start. Our opening hymn, 207, if you use the hymn book, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained and clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Let's read the psalm together, you uh, at the uh, chiming in on the, on the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Mercy Let Israel now proclaim. Mercy the Lord is my strength and my song. And my there is a sound of exultation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I 
I shall not die, but live. And the, the Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not the Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. He was I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. Our second lesson is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I have a couple of uh, corny jokes for you to start off with. What do you do with a, a rabbit who's been bad in school? You expel them. Ex- eggs spell them? Is that a good groan? Okay. Now, how did the Easter Bunny feel on Monday? Exhausted. Okay. One more. So, we all know that Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee, uh, went to Pilate to ask if he could take the body of Jesus after Jesus was taken down from the cross, and he was to place him in his new tomb. That, that Joseph had made for himself and his family. Well, Pilate said to him, Joseph, you're one of the wealthiest men in the region. You spent all this money and all this time to have a new tomb carved out of stone and be ready for you and your family. How could you give it to this guy named Jesus? And Joseph of Arimathea said, that's eh, okay. He only needs it for the weekend. (laughs) Okay. 
Well, a morning chuckle. In 1994, Jürgen Moltmann, who is a systematic theologian, wrote, some, wrote a sermon called, And Jesus Laughed. Because part of the tradition of Easter morning is to have some joke, corny or not. And he says, Easter is the morning when the Lord laughs out loud, laughs at all the things that snuff out joy, all the things that pretend to be all-powerful, like cruelty and madness, despair and evil, and most especially, the great pretender, death. Jesus sweeps them away with his wonderful resurrection laughter. This morning we're here to celebrate. And after more than six weeks of holding back the alleluias and the bright colors and all the joyful things that make us want to jump up and dance, through that season of Lent, we are now in the time of Easter. And Easter continues, not just today, but for 50 days. We go into the season of Easter that follows Jesus as the resurrected Lord encountering his disciples and other people for 50 days. And we keep the Paschal candle representing Jesus. The candle that was lit last night with the Easter fire at our vigil service for 50 days up to and including the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. In our reading from Isaiah 25 this morning, it says, He will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Mary went to the tomb. It says it was early on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, because remember the Sabbath was the end of the week, which was Saturday for Jewish people, and still is. So on the Sunday morning, while it was still dark, now in the Gospel of John, John loves to use the imagery of light and dark. And dark represents many things, but it also represents that not coming yet to full knowledge. Because Nicodemus, in John chapter 3, you may remember from a few weeks ago, went to see Jesus at night. And very specifically was mentioned at night. Not just to sneak around so no one saw him, because he himself was a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin. But it also represents a spiritual lack of understanding when Jesus talked to Nicodemus and said, you must be born again or born from above. You must be born of water and the Spirit. But Nicodemus hadn't yet understood. Mary went at night, but it was just before the dawn. The Sabbath was over, so she was allowed to be able to go. And she went it doesn't say why she went to go. The, uh, the other Gospels talk about three women going and bringing spices to, to prepare and anoint the body of Jesus who did not have time to be prepared for the proper Jewish burial because the Sabbath had come. But Mary went. You know, it's interesting. Have any of you ever been up to watch the dawn? Yeah? Yeah? Have you? Isn't it beautiful? But before the dawn, it can feel and seem like it's the darkest. And when you're in the darkest moment, it almost can feel like, will the day ever come? And then, if you're outside watching the sky, suddenly you see that little bit of a little bit of light, hey, just on that horizon, just starting to peek through. And Mary went. The dawn dispels darkness. Light reveals the beauty of nature. The 
the birds sing. The color of flowers can be seen. A new hope, a new day dawns. But when you're in the darkness, as Mary was, would she even have noticed that this dawn was coming? If anyone has ever experienced the loss of a loved one, you know what I mean. You don't always feel like the dawn is going to come. But it can be all kinds of situations that make you feel that you're in darkness. That you feel that crushing burden that almost wants to snuff you out. On December 26, this past year, my wife Annette had surgery. For a month, we didn't know whether she had cancer or not, but we knew she had a tumor. It was, as you can imagine, if you've been through it, a difficult month leading up to that. On the day of the surgery, the day after Christmas, um, we said our goodbyes and they rolled her out. Everything was going to be fine. And about 40 minutes after I say goodbye to Annette, and I'm waiting in the, in the waiting room area, this is a banner, my phone rings. It said Banner Hospital on it. It was the surgeon. The surgeon said, we had an incident. Your wife had a reaction to the preparation and the gases, and her blood pressure dropped, and her heart stopped. In that moment, it was like a lifetime. It was like a lifetime where my heart went like this. From the words she said, there was an incident. It was like the darkness had come. Mary went in the dark to the tomb to be the one she loved to at least honor him a chance because she didn't have a chance because he was taken down and put in the tomb and then the Sabbath hit and she could not go. So she went. And a lot of things happened in, the, in that whole time, right? She saw the stone was moved. But interesting, she didn't even go look in the tomb. She just ran back to say they took Jesus. And Peter and John come running, go in, see it's empty, run back. They didn't understand what was happening. But the clock was ticking. And Jesus then, I'm skipping ahead a bit, encountered Mary, and in her grief and her crying, and as was the custom, she would look down to a strange male she wouldn't look at it into the eyes of the person. But through her own tears and weeping, she could not really realize who he was. Why are you weeping? But when he said, Mary, suddenly she realized it was Jesus. The doctor on the, end of the other end of the phone said, it's okay. After three minutes of CPR, we got her back. Do I have your permission to continue? And I said, yes. But when I knew that she was okay, I went to the second floor where they have a bit of a canteen and beautiful windows and you can look out at the Catalina Mountains. 
And for the next almost six hours, I just looked at the mountains. But I had this wonderful sense that Jesus was with Annette and that Jesus was with me and that he soaked in the beauty of God's nature looking at those mountains. I just knew because Jesus is the risen Lord, because Jesus is alive, I knew that the power of Christ was present. Easter is a time when we want to know that Jesus is alive in this world, transforming this world from that a darkness to the light of his presence. And we celebrate that today because when we think of Easter, Easter is synonymous with life and hope and joy and beauty. It dispels the darkness of the night we heard last night in the Exalted, an ancient hymn during the vigil service. And that Jesus offers us a life and a kingdom which is so much better than what this world sometimes presents to us. The risen Lord is here. And when hope died in the hearts of the followers of Jesus, and Mary especially, it was stirred back to life when he spoke to her. He spoke to her. In John chapter 10, we hear that mine The sheep know my voice, and they follow me. And she was reawakened to a new and living hope. St. Francis of Assisi, our patron saint here, in the prayer of St. Francis, the prayer attributed to him, we hear that sadness could become joy. Darkness, light, doubt to faith, despair to hope, injury to pardon, hatred to love, and dying to eternal life. And that's what Easter's about. That's why we're here. We're here to celebrate the joy of hope and life And to know that Jesus didn't just die and be raised one day, but he continues to be the risen Lord who is alive now. Jesus, who not only was risen, but ascended to fulfill the glorification of his life and then to send us the Holy Spirit to allow the world to continue to be transformed by his teachings and his love. And he calls out to each of us every day, calling us to follow him. And it's interesting in the words of today, when Jesus asks, you know, whom whom do you seek? Echoes the words back at the beginning in chapter 1 when he called his first disciples. And he said, he said, What do you seek? Come and see. Come follow me. And that's what Easter calls us to do. It calls us to enter into a new world, a new life, a place where death and dying have been laughed at by the resurrection of Jesus, as Moltmann called the resurrection laughter. We know that one day we all come to a point where we leave this mortal earth. But because of Easter, we have the promise 
of eternal life with him. And also the promise of a, a fuller life now. A life that can bring more joy. A life that can, again, take us from doubt to faith, from sadness to joy, from despair to hope. That's what Easter's about. And that's what the risen Savior offers each of us today. So Easter calls us to trust life by living it. It calls us to have the courage to grow and to free ourselves from the bondage and the tombs that try to suffocate us. The tombs of broken relationships, of addictions, of spiritual confusion, of temptations, all the things that want to pull us away from Christ, Jesus has broken the hold that those have on us and offers us new life and new hope and a joy that we can truly say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And we could respond, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. So today, celebrate but the work begins. Just as when Deacon Becky says at the end of the service, you have heard the word, now the work begins. Easter isn't an end, it's a beginning. It's a new start and is offered to everyone, regardless of who you are. And wherever your faith level is, it doesn't matter. The reality is that Jesus encounters us. Mary. And the joy is back. So listen for the voice of Jesus calling you. Calling you to life. Calling you out of darkness into light. From despair into hope. And from sadness into joy. Let us pray. O creating God, you have raised Jesus from death. We come in joy to hear the good news of life. O living Christ, you walk among us as our risen Lord. We listen for your word for us this morning. And O spirit of life, we experience your presence this morning of the resurrection. Move among us with your power. Amen. Amen. Today being Easter Sunday, last night and this morning, we're reminded of our faith in Christ. And we're also reminded through the waters of baptism that we die to our old self and we are raised again as Jesus was raised to new life and to new hope. I'm going to invite all of you as you're able to please stand as we continue with the renewal of baptismal vows after which I will be going around with blessed water to go and sprinkle you or aspurging to remind you of your baptism. So through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You may... Uh, be seated while I come around. That was probably water spots on the camera. Filled with joy on this Easter day, let us, with confidence and hope, place our needs before our loving Father. Let us pray for all the holy people of God that we may embrace the cross and follow Christ as ministers of reconciliation in a broken world. Lord, in your mercy. You are prayer. For the peoples and leaders of nations, that we may preserve and care for the blessings of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the alienated and rejected, that all may come to a renewed hope in God's love for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this community, that during this holy season, God's grace may abound in us and strengthen our resolve to love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the isolated, and the lonely, especially Henry Whitty. Henry. 
John Witte. John. Shelly Erickson. Shelly. Jean Schwaffel. Jean. Bob Vint Sr. Bob. Kelly Davis. Kelly. Will. Will. Jason Camp. Jason. Shirley Underwood. Shirley. Jim Ravenel. Jim. Frank Brown. Frank. Pat Kirk. Pat. Delilah Wagren. Delilah. Sandra Findlay. Sandra. Rebecca Redding. Rebecca. Tom Moorhead. Tom. Paul Dazenroth. Paul. Elaine Dazenroth. Elaine. Ellen Sachs. Ellen. For all who serve in our armed forces and all those close to our hearts who are serving in harm's way, hold them safely in the palm of your hand, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Norma Poole. Norma. Sylvia Marino. Sylvia. That they may share new life in God's heavenly kingdom Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O God of our redemption, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may walk the path of life with renewed faith and a right heart to devoutly serve you in our brothers and sisters through Christ our Savior. Amen. As you're able, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Now, birthdays. Any birthdays today or the next few days to celebrate? Take note of any birthdays. Anyone here? Ed, come on up, Ed. And Kathleen. And anniversaries. Anniversaries. Any anniversaries? Come on forward. Come on forward. And I know there are some online watching that are celebrating. So how, how many years? 41. 41 years. All right. Craig and Tony. And Dick and Marcia, how many years? 62. 62. Oh, 62. 62. Yeah. Wow. And I'm not going to ask for birthdays unless you want to offer them. Oh, yeah. 88. 88 for Kathleen. All right. 81 for Ed. All right. Well, let's have a prayer on this day of celebration. Loving and gracious God, we thank you, especially on this special day, to remember all who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for New Year's. We thank you for relationships and love. We ask for your blessings upon those celebrating with happiness and joy, peace and health. And we pray this in the name of our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
Just before we continue, I just want to make sure everyone knows that the Episcopal Church welcomes all to come forward and receive communion. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day and through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The choir will have communion first, so please, everyone, wait till after the choir is, has received. And if you are unable to come up due to mobility reasons, please let our communion assistants who will be walking around, let them know and they'll bring communion to you.
Are there any Eucharistic visitors today to come forward? No? Okay. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Easter day and always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.